Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, you know what we're going to do? We are going to get going on Logbook of the World. Now, I know that a lot of you are already on Logbook of the World, uh, but if you are, you know how difficult it was to get set up the first time. And the reality of it is, setting it up and doing the uploads really isn't that complicated and difficult. The hardest part is getting you got that gosh darn key signed. So we're going to cover that. We're going to cover how to upload. We're going to cover how to sign. So I'm glad you're here to join us. Oh, and if you think of it, please click down on the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps us out here on the channel. And when new videos come out, you can receive notifications. Anyway, with that, on with the show. Hi, everybody. Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to set up Logbook of the World. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and search for Logbook of the World. That's L-O-T-W, an abbreviation for it, and the word setup. When I search for that, the first top link in my uh, Chrome browser is Getting Started Logbook of the World LOTW Help Pages. So that's where we're going to go. Now, you want to read through this page. You want to look at using. This is, this is a great landing page for you. There's all sorts of great references in here. Um, and uh, you should use them. Now, the one thing I will warn you, though, is step one, you've got to download and install a piece of software called TQSL or Trusted QSL. The download uh, page is right here under uh, Start by Downloading and Installing TQSL. Um, so we'll go ahead and click on that. It takes us to the download page. Um, now, there's a problem with the download page. The download page that it takes us to has a little lock here up in the top, which means it's an HTTPS site. Uh, however, the link right here to download the latest version of TQSL for Windows, the link takes you to an insecure site. If you're running the latest version of Chrome and you click on that link, it probably won't work. It won't even tell you why it's not working. Uh, however, if you right-hand mouse click on it and click save, uh, or uh, let's see, save link as, it's going to pop up with the download screen, and we'll go ahead and click save. And what you'll see in your little download down here is a red exclamation saying that this file cannot be downloaded securely. So I happen to know where it was going by highlighting over it, right? I can see down in the very corner, right down in the very corner down there. And I know it's hard to see on the video that it's going to www.arl.org. And uh, so I can safely click on this little up arrow, this up tilde, and I can click on keep, and it'll go ahead and keep that file for me and let me run it. So we've got it downloaded. Let's go ahead and click on it. It's going to open it. I'm going to minimize here. And then I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to click Accept. And of course, I encourage you to read their licensing agreement before you agree to it. Um, I'm going to take the default where it wants to install and click Next. And then I am just going to install. It's going to ask me one more time if I'm sure. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And it's a very small program. So it will pop right in. And I don't need to read the quick start. Uh, I encourage you to read it if you have any questions beyond this. Uh, watch the uh, video all the way through before you go through this, obviously, and make sure that I'm not leaving any gaping holes in your question. Uh, now, when I initially launch this, it's going to come up with the uh, introduction and tell me to please read through that. And it's also going to tell me that I have no call sign certificate. So do I want to request a call sign certificate now? Um, and I'm going to say yes. Now, 
I've already got a certificate. I already have that stuff. So what I've done is I've unplugged the network cable from this computer so it doesn't automatically go up and send it. Um, I'm going to create a uh, personal call sign certificate. Um, I'm not creating a primary club call sign, but I could, given the choices. I'm going to go ahead and put my call sign in. For my DXCC entity, that's the United States, so I've got to get down to the U's here. There we go, United States of America. Uh, date the first CUSO was made from this call sign, and that would be, for me, for my call sign, it would be here. Or thereabouts. Date of the last QSO, okay, and I'm going to leave it blank. It's still a valid call sign. Um, and it's interesting because you can make multiple keys. Let's say you operate it under a different call sign or you have a vanity call or something like that. That vanity call, you can turn around and uh, use that vanity call uh, any way that you uh, please and then also set up your old call sign with an end date so you can upload QSLs from your old call sign. Then, of course, it asks all my information. And we'll just pop this in real quick. Next, and it wants my email address, and this is really important. This is the email address that they will email the signed certificate to. And, of course, I think everybody knows my email address, but uh, if you don't, there it is, stu at ag6ag.org. Now I can click on Finish. Now it's asking me if I want to upload the certificate request to Logbook of the World now. Uh, you do not need an account on Logbook of the World to do this. And as a matter of fact, you cannot create an account on Logbook of the World until you create this certificate. And I'm going to say no. It's asking me where I want to sign my request. And I'll just drop it right down here in Documents for right now. You may now send the certificate to log uh, LOTW-help at ARRL.org or see www.ARRL.org uh, LOTW. And basically, this allows me to send that certificate in to get it signed. Um, let's talk a little bit about that really quick. And I think most everybody nowadays understands what public-private uh, certificates are or public-private key security is. Um, but the way that they're using public-private security and public-private signing is that you're creating a certificate request which they are going to use a key that they have to sign that certificate. So that means that they know that they confirmed it that it's really you. Then they're going to email you the key back. Now, um, when I got mine, when I got my key signed, I had to wait for them to snail mail me a postcard, okay, to the address that I have registered uh, with the FCC as my official mailing address for my license. So, uh, if you're not sure what that is, or you don't live there anymore before you even start this process, get that squared away with the FCC, okay? Um, now, once they confirm that, that little postcard they sent me had a code on it that I had to, you know, go to a URL that they list on that card and put in. But people that I've talked to that have just recently done this since the COVID-19 thing started, um, said, hey, they got a phone call from, you know, the uh, uh, 
um, whatchamacallit, from ARL, the guy that was okaying this from his house, and he had to submit a picture of his driver's license with some stuff blacked out, and but he got it done. So just remember, when you submit that, okay, and you can automatically submit it. If you get it all set up, just go ahead and tell it to submit it. It's going to send it off. You're going to get an email confirmation. And just understand that it's going to take a little while for them to get this thing signed. This is not, I'm going to do this and start uploading stuff. Okay. Once you get that signed certificate from there, you'll see that you have this right here that you're waiting for the certificate on under the call sign certificates. You can then click here and load that certificate that they sent you. Okay. Now, the last thing that we want to do also, once we get our key back, is we're going to want to set up a station location. And under here, we'll just go ahead and say, create a new station location. And of course, here's my call sign. And you'll pull down from the call sign keys that you have. And then our grid square. DM04NE. Our ITU zone, for me that's 6. My CQ zone, for me that is 3. And then next, and I have to give it uh, a name, but I have to give it a state too. So I'm in California. All right. And my county is Ventura. And I can select next because I'm not inside a park. And then I'm just going to call this Home QTH. And there you go. I now have a location. So all that comes into play when you're uploading your stuff, right? Uh, and we'll see that actually coming up in just a little bit. All right. Well, let's get started. I am going to go ahead and open up my uh, program here of Log for Old Men. And it really doesn't matter what software you're using for uh, storing your QSOs. Um, what you can do is obviously figure out that you're going to export them to get your initial import done. So let's see here. Uh, I'm going to take a subset of my QSOs uh, just uh, for a particular date range. Let's see. We'll go from, we'll just, you know, we'll, uh, we'll do this year. We'll do January. We'll do January 1st uh, to today. Why not? All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and I am exporting to ADIF. Oh, need to select all my QSOs. There we go. We'll export this to ADIF. And let's see, where do I want to send it? Well, I have a nice folder here for ADIF, and I am going to type in there we go. And I've had 1,599 QSOs this year. Now, understand, there is absolutely no problem with exporting QSOs twice and importing them twice up into Logbook of the World. Every once in a while, it's not a bad idea to make sure that uh, it got everything, especially if you're using auto configurations to upload them, which I'm going to show in the next video I do uh, for Logbook for Old Men. Uh, but in this particular case, all I got to do is locate my uh, QSL manager here. And... Did I not launch it? There it is. All right. And I am going to sign and log and upload. Oh, 
I got two versions of it. I'll close the second one. I am going to sign and log and upload what I just grabbed. So there we go. I'm going to say open. The file tells me what's in there. Is all that correct? And I'm going to say yes, absolutely. And this says that I can set a starting and ending date. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. The station does not match QSO, let's see, station location. Uh, I'll ignore. There we go. And you notice it's importing them and it's telling me how many dupes. The log contains 880 uh, QSOs, which appear to have already been signed and uploaded. Uh, and 21 QSOs, which are new. I'm going to say, yeah, let's, uh, let's just do the new one. So that means there were actually 21 QSOs that I had missed that are in that log. Anyway, says the file queue is processed. And after reading this message, you may close the program. So that's all there is to it to get your data up to Logbook of the World. Now, log into Logbook of the World. You've already done that. You've gotten your key. You've got all that stuff. Hopefully, you're poking around. Now, you've got some data up there. You can upload your entire log. That's fine. And you know what? Just make it happen. If you have any other questions or anything else, reach out. And I hope to hear you on the air real soon. This is Stu, AG6AG. Wow. Wow. Well, that wasn't quite that complicated, but you can see where it gets a little weird when you start talking about getting the key signed, right? Getting that certificate back. A little bit of work's going to go into that, but you know what? Hey, uh, whatever it takes to get it done, you'll do it, right? Because that's what we do. We're amateur radio operators, and there's nothing that we can't do. Hey, if you think of it, Click on that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Any questions, comments, uh, please make them down in the comments as well. And with that, I want to thank you for joining me. And have a great day. This is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73. Hope to hear you out there on the air.